think the recognition that breastfeeding is a public health policy as much as a personal choice is, is very welcome. Indeed, it's something my colleagues and I have been emphasising in lectures for uh, a considerable amount of time. We have quite a lot of science now to suggest that breastfeeding has beneficial effects for health, both in the short term and longer term, and so it can indeed be regarded as a, a public health measure to uh, improve health and reduce expenditure on health care. Hopefully, such a recognition might lead to uh, you know, better policies, better healthcare policies um, to support breastfeeding and also to um, employers perhaps um, putting greater focus on supporting breastfeeding in the working environment so that mothers are able to continue to breastfeed and provide their baby with breast milk for as long as possible, even when they return to work. So you would hope that this recognition uh, should have some positive effects. I think ultimately mothers uh, can continue to both breastfeed and provide their baby with breast milk if they feel that they either want to or have to return to the workplace by expressing milk for their baby and ideally employers should provide facilities and opportunity for mothers to actually do this and of course it's also important that um, products such as breast pumps are developed which mothers actually want to use, find comfortable, um, which encourages them in turn to continue to express milk. The important thing is providing the baby with the breast milk, uh, whether it comes directly from the mother or whether she expresses it. It's interesting that we have increasing recognition of the uh, health benefits of breastfeeding, both short term and long term, and I think this is increasingly recognised certainly um, amongst the scientific community and health professionals, and I think to uh, quite a large extent uh, parents or new mothers certainly in the UK um, do receive information about the health benefits of breastfeeding for their baby, but there's almost a disconnect between being aware of the, uh, this scientific evidence and actually what happens in practice. It doesn't necessarily translate into uh, success in breastfeeding or success in continuing to breastfeed. Um, and I think that's very apparent somewhere like the UK where antenatally mothers do receive information on the health benefits to their baby of breastfeeding and yet we have still have quite disappointing rates of breastfeeding, certainly beyond the first uh, two weeks uh, postnatally. So I think it's then instructive to perhaps try and look at some of the uh, things that could be done to try to improve the practical aspects. One of the reasons that's sometimes given is that mothers find breastfeeding painful and I often think that perhaps that does come down to the mother's expectations about the breastfeeding process, what she's been led to believe. If we idealise the process of breastfeeding antenatally and perhaps give mothers uh, expectations that aren't quite realistic, then that may make them more likely to give up. For example, the frequency of feeds, if mothers are led to believe that babies will feed every four hours and then sleep uh, for a period of time, that may not be the case in practice for a lot of mothers, which may lead them to give up. And likewise, if they're told that breastfeeding should be completely pain-free or involve no discomfort, I think again, when mothers find that that's not the case, it may make them more likely to give up because they think it's not being done properly. I mean, it's important to... Um, make sure that mothers are supported postnatally so that if they are experiencing discomfort, which could be due to um, incorrect attachment, for example, that it is dealt with. So these things mustn't be dismissed. But I think actually just making mothers more aware of what to expect in practice, perhaps um, that's best done by talking to other mothers and other women who've breastfed. And that perhaps brings us on to the whole issue of the breastfeeding culture and breastfeeding support. So you know, in some societies still today, uh, girls will grow up 
in an environment where they see their female relatives breastfeeding, uh, they come, accept that as the norm and they assume that that's what they're going to do when they have their own children. But in other places, and I think the UK is maybe an example of this, uh, we don't really have a breastfeeding culture and it's quite possible for children to grow up never having seen a baby breastfeed, perhaps never even heard about breastfeeding. I sometimes think that when we approach mothers when they're pregnant for the first time and start talking about breastfeeding, it's maybe too late if this is something that's completely foreign to them. So I think in an ideal world we need to try and encourage a more breastfeeding uh, friendly culture. Uh, one way of doing this would be uh, to introduce aspects of infant feeding and infant health into the curriculum at school so that children are made aware of how you should appropriately feed a baby um, and how this may affect the baby's health both in the short term and later on which I think is an interesting topic in itself and would perhaps help to normalise the whole process. As I say in other situations, in other cultures, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. Uh, so I think we need to look at these issues in each individual location and come up with appropriate strategies to try and deal with the issues. Yes, I think it's recognised that although things have undoubtedly improved, in general, uh, the sort of education received by trainee health professionals, particularly doctors, is not, is not uh, necessarily what it should be. Um, I think perhaps what has improved is the more, if you like, scientific aspects of infant feeding. Uh, these are maybe being taught more, so it, it, it's quite likely that trainee health professionals have a better awareness of the health benefits of breastfeeding. But I think what's perhaps lacking is the actual practical aspects of how to help a woman breastfeed, um, the practical problems that women experience. Um, in general, I think midwifery training tends to encompass this to a much better degree, which is appropriate because they are uh, the people that tend to help mothers initiate breastfeeding. But it is important that uh, primary care doctors and paediatricians have a practical knowledge of breastfeeding, not just a theoretical knowledge, uh, so that they can be supportive of mothers when they're experiencing problems and encourage them. <laughs>